When we decide to see those difficult moments in our life with that vision of belief and hope and faith that there could be something better, that's when everything opens up. That's when invisible doors open for us. That's when the universe starts to conspire. We all in this moment have something that we've been suffering from, but we have two choices of how we're gonna see it. We can see it through the lens of fear, or we can see it through the lens of hope and optimism and a belief system beyond our wildest dreams. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for spiritual seekers. We will manifest what we believe. There's a big but here. We often have an idea of what we want to bring into our life, have a vision of who we want to be, have a desire. But the biggest thing that's blocking us from stepping into that truth is the belief. I was literally backstage just now with somebody and she was like, I really just can't wait to be, you know, doing more of what you're doing. And I, and I looked at her and I was like, you will. And then I stopped myself and I said, no, no, you are. You are. Doesn't matter like the audience size. It doesn't matter the reach. It's like, you're just doing it. And so when we get that and we believe that, then it just multiplies. The universe conspires. And I know I'm not unfamiliar with lacking belief in any way, shape, or form. I, 17 years ago, would never in a million years have believed that I would be here, right here, right now with all of you, that I would have had the career I've had, the life that I've had, the husband I have, the child I have. Nope, never would have believed it. And there's one moment in particular I can think my way back to. I'm, I'm 24 years old and I'm sitting in my white beat up Toyota Corolla and I'm adhering to alternate side of the street parking regulations in New York City. If anybody knows New York, you have to sit on the side of the road until the street cleaners come behind you. Very sexy. So I'm sitting there and I'm in my white beat up Toyota Corolla and I'm just shielding my eyes from the sun and I'm drinking this Gatorade and I'm coming down from the night before. I have not slept. I was just at an after hours party about 30 minutes prior. No business being behind the wheel. And I'm just in the car and I'm pressing play and rewind on my cassette tape. Play, rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind. Over and over I'm listening to the voice of this psychic medium who I had had a reading with five months earlier. And I hear the psychic's voice say to me, you're struggling with drugs and alcohol. It's not that bad, I respond, quivering, literally. And she goes on to say, my dear, you have two choices in this lifetime. You can choose to stay on this path and really suffer, really struggle with addiction. Or you can choose to get clean and sober and make a major impact on the world. Play. Rewind, play, rewind. You can choose to get sober and make a major impact on the world. Play and rewind. You can choose to get sober and make a major impact on the world. And I feel her words and I want that truth, but I don't believe it. I don't have any proof of how that would be possible. I don't believe I'm worthy of that. I'm afraid to even contemplate what it would take to get there. I just kept pressing play, rewind. Then I noticed the street cleaners coming behind me, and so I have to move the car across the street. I park the car. I look outside my window, and I see all these people with their shoulder bags and their coffees and their dogs, and they're all walking somewhere. They're going to work. They're doing something special in the world. And I'm going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. And I sit in that car and I just chug that final Gatorade. I throw the Gatorade bottle on the car. I step out of the car. I walk across the street to my studio apartment that's on the ground floor with the garbage cans outside the window. I get into the shower. The shower is kind of like crusty and moldy and I just let the water just flush down my face. And I'm seeing this mascara just dripping down my eyes in the mirror. At which point I take some kind of downer just to fall asleep. 
and I get in my bed with that downer, waiting for it to set in, and I start to feverishly journal in my journal over and over and over again. Get sober, and you can make a major impact on the world. Get sober, and you can make a major impact on the world, just, just over and over and over. And I hear the clanking noises of the garbage cans outside my window, and it just gets softer and softer and softer, and the pill starts to set in, the anxiety will subside until I wake up later. I think my way back to that girl, 24-year-old girl, with a stack of self-help books next to her bed, her journal in her hand. And I can think about how her belief and her faith were stronger than her fear. And in that experience of knowing that she could transcend that addiction, that she could transcend the traumas of her past and step into the light of who she was here to be. And you guys, I am so proud of her. I am so proud of her. Because she just took a mustard seed of belief and faith and just ran with it and multiplied it and became a woman who is making a major impact in the world, not just in this room or on a podcast or publicly, in moment-to-moment situations. At the deli last night, when I just am riffing with this guy about my 17 years of sobriety, and he looks at me and he goes, I have 62 years. And just feeling connected to the human race, feeling as though not only my words or my work can elevate, but knowing that my presence is enough. And we all have that truth, that capacity, that magnitude within us. And we all have unique ways in which we will express it. But we may be blocking it. And right now, I want you to just notice one of the biggest blocks is the victim mentality of, I can't get out of this. And every single person in this room may or may not, maybe a few of you don't, but most of us in this room may be living right now in a way where you're thinking, well, how am I going to get over this part of my life? Or how can I transcend that? Or how can I get there? I interviewed a lot of you guys yesterday in the elevators, in the lobby. I talked to, you didn't realize it, but I was interviewing you. And I got really clear about what's up. It's the belief system that's lacking that we all need to transcend. And I hope that this moment in time can be a quantum shift for you. I believe that if you want that, that this moment in time with me can be a quantum shift for you. I want to honor the difficult stuff first, though. Because as the beautiful Sufi poet Rumi said, The wound is the place where the light enters you. Take a look at the wounds in your life. Maybe you could start to see that loss of that job as your opportunity to finally step into your entrepreneurial dream. Or you could see that divorce as an opportunity for you to get closer to your truth. Heal yourself. Love yourself more than you ever could have imagined. Or you could see that loss of a loved one as an opportunity to get closer to a spiritual connection of your own understanding. And when we decide to see those difficult moments in our life with that vision of belief and hope and faith that there could be something better, that's when everything opens up. That's when invisible doors open for us. That's when when the universe starts to conspire. We all in this moment have something that we've been suffering from, but we have two choices of how we're going to see it. We can see it through the lens of fear, or we can see it through the lens of hope and optimism and a belief system beyond our wildest dreams. We can. We can. And some of you might be sitting there being like, oh, this sounds really nice. She sounds really nice. Yeah, yeah, but F you, you know? I don't believe that. So just keep riding with me, because I'm going to show you how. This is the plan. This is the deal, guys. The universe is always a yes for what you put out. The universe is always a yes. Always a yes. 
And so you might think you're a yes for like that big money, or you might think you're a yes for that baby on the way, or you might think you're a yes for that romance that's going to change you forever, or a yes for that entrepreneurial career, or a yes for that audience, or a yes for that microphone, whatever that yes might be for you. And yes, there's a part of you that is, I want that, I'm ready for that. But there's another part of you that's really blocking the yes. And that part of you is the part that doesn't believe you're worthy of it. This is a human condition. We are not taught that we have this magnitude of greatness within us. I'm going to really use that word, greatness. We're not taught to be in the belief that we have a magnitude of greatness. No, as children, we get these moments of no's, we get these moments of shutdown, we get traumatized experiences, feelings of being inadequate, unlovable, not good enough, feelings of terror and fear frozen in our body. All of us, the human condition, we are not immune to those moments in time in those early days that create these exiled parts of us that just hide out, never want to come out of the closet, run for fear, and just say, no way, never want to go there again. And that's when we build up a lot of other parts of ourselves. We build up a lot of protection mechanisms. And one of those protection mechanisms that I want to talk about today is the belief that we're not worthy. Because if we don't start to address that protector part of us, we could do all the things we could write the best book, or we could date the best guys, or we could do everything out there that seems appropriate, but it won't hit. Or it'll get there and it'll just fall apart. Our internal condition is what allows us to become the magnet for that which we desire. And it's not always necessarily something outside of us. It's a true feeling inside. It's funny, I saw Matt backstage, Lewis is numero uno, who's running this, running this shit behind the scenes. And so I saw Matt and I was like, Matt, you know, it's so interesting to see you right now because I saw you, I don't know, like eight, nine years ago or seven years ago. And that was the last time I saw him on the balcony at Lewis's house. And I was like, listen, dude, I was in such a dark place then. I didn't even know some of the, the stories that needed to be revealed for me. I just want to acknowledge that you held space for me at that time. And I'm going to just let you know that I'm really proud that I'm really in a great state of peace right now. <laughs> and so we have these moments where we don't believe. I want you to think about it for a second. What is an area of your life? And you can just shout it back to me. What's an area of your life where you're like, I don't know if I could, if I believe that yet. Something that's lacking faith. Financial responsibility. Career. Career. Okay, got you. Focus. Okay relationships, being a good mom. Beautiful. There's a lot of honesty in this room. Discipline. Okay, so everybody tracking with me that we have a part of us. It's, it's not that we are not worthy. It's that we have a part of us that doesn't believe we are. And so often what we're going to do, and I was, I, was, I was talking about this actually backstage with, with the makeup artist, Kat, who's so beautiful. And I was talking about this, and she said, yeah, this feels like we almost override that part of ourselves and we push it down and push past it. But what would happen if we decided to befriend it? What would happen if we allowed ourselves to just witness that part of us that may not be in full belief right now, and instead of saying, yes, I can, or I'm gonna fake it till I make it, or I'm gonna you know, affirm what I desire, which all are beautiful ways of living, absolutely, nothing wrong with that. But there's a deeper underbelly of grounded belief that must come through in order for you to truly step into this life that you wanna live. And so, Instead of overriding that lack mentality, that fear, that unworthiness, I want you to open up your capacity to get curious about it. Just get curious about it. Befriend it. I mean, how different would your life be if instead of every time you felt that feeling of unworthiness, you just you know, picked up the drink or you, you know, did more work or you burnt yourself out. But instead, what would happen if you were just like, oh, there's that part of me again. And I want to send it a lot of love and compassion and just some curiosity generosity. How different would that feel for you? Just what it does is it softens the edges. It allows you to just be open to the fact that there's no bad part of you. There's just a lot of protection mechanisms that are in your way of changing that core belief system. 
And so what would happen in those moments when we noticed that disbelief come up and we just started to lean into the other energy, the energy of compassion? And it's just simple. Notice the feeling, where it is in your body, what do you know about it, what does it need? You're gonna hear it right away. I need more fun, I need some commitment, I need some compassion, I need some kindness, whatever that word comes for you. And so I want you to just give yourself a somatic experience of what that feels like. Just place your hand on your heart and your other hand on your belly. And I want you to just notice now that potential of curiosity. Yeah, I'm willing to be curious about this part of me. And I want to be really compassionate towards it. And just for a moment, just, just say, say I how, whatever comes to mind, whether it's courage or compassion, or if it's breath and just connect to it, what does that feel like? Take a deep breath in and let it go. Another deep breath in and let it go. What does that feel like? Calm. Release, peace and self-love. What was that? Wholeness. This is it, guys. We spend so much of our day overriding our feelings of unworthiness so that we never have to face into those impermissible feelings of being unlovable and inadequate. But what if we started to build up some tools? The first one, to strengthen our belief, is to just calm the part of us that doesn't believe. To be that soothing internal parent for the part that doesn't believe. Because think about it, if you're a little part that's like a kid part, it's like, I don't believe, I don't believe, it's just running all day, all day, all day, how could you possibly let belief set in? You're gonna like put up that vision board and that little part's gonna be like, no way, you know? Or you're gonna you know, ask for help and then you're gonna feel so scared that you asked for what you wanted. But what if you just gave yourself a moment to pause and connect to that part? and be really calm with it and compassionate, it can relax. And in that space, you collect all this energy of the truth of who you are, belief. And it's just a mustard seed of a, adjustment, just a molecule of adjustment. And the goal here is just to add up those molecules. It's not like we just overnight are like, I believe, you know, we could have that. Maybe today I'll just give you a quantum shift. But we have these moments of miracles that we want to add up along the way. If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.